enough already with that. We've already done that in another video, so this time I'm actually going to give you a tour of my new truck. Okay guys, welcome to another video. I'm sure you can tell that I'm wearing the same exact thing as I was in the organization video and that's because we are shooting this on the same day because I actually have to go out right now and I don't know when I'll be back so this is what happens. So come on and I'm going to show you my new truck. So this is my first time ever driving a Western Star and from the week that I've been in it already, I can tell you that it drives a whole lot different than any other truck I've ever driven before. The thing that stands out most to me is it's just huge. It feels huge when you're driving it. And it, it honestly, I kind of equate it to driving a yacht on wheels on the road. It's like, it's like a big boat and you're just trying to steer it around. I mean, that's kind of like any truck, but this truck more so. Another thing that's new for me that I've actually never had on a truck that is mine, I've dealt with trucks that had them, but I've never had a cattle guard on mine. So that's new, it's gonna be different for me. I have a lot more room I need to accommodate for up front. So I need to keep that in mind. One of the things that I do want to mention is the Kenworth that I was driving for local didn't have hood mirrors. And I was very upset about it for a while, but I am really glad that this truck has hood mirrors because I use them for a lot of things. Everything works pretty much the same as any other truck. Um, I think the lights look really cool at night, which I'm sure we'll get some shots of that. One of the things that I find is really nice about this particular truck is um, the side box. I think I've already showed you this in my cleaning video. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check that one out. I show you how I organize the entire truck. Um, cleaning video. I meant my organization video, not my cleaning video. Anyways, I just have two boxes here, one for my cleaning stuff and one for my tools. Also have triangles here, which you can't see right now, some chains. There's also some chains on the other side. Um, my fire extinguisher is here and just some washer fluid. Um, I usually top off all my fluids here on the yard so I don't need to carry a lot with me. There is more fluids on the other side if I need them. Because the fifth wheel is slid all the way back, the trailer actually starts right about here for the front of the trailer. So to hook on the airlines from my truck to the trailer, I have to climb up here to this small catwalk that I have. I don't want to get too dirty. So. I walk up these steps and I stand on here. I really wish that I had another plate here to extend the catwalk, which I'm hoping to get eventually. One thing that's different about this truck compared to the Freightliners that I've been driving and also the Kenworth is that the quarter fenders here are actually steel or aluminum. I don't, they're metal of some kind. Um, before, they're, they're most of the time always plastic. Um, so it's cool to have some shiny bits. <laughs> Makes you cooler, right? <laughs> My absolute favorite thing about this truck is actually the windows and how big they are. You'll see inside how much you can see. It's also cool that they're tinted. So a lot of people can't see inside, which is awesome. One thing that's different about the Western Stars than the Cascadias is that usually the Cascadias have this upper section of storage that is not available here. And also the storage in the little cubbies is smaller. Um, even with the older Freightliners, you still have a cubby that's a lot larger than this. But I just keep my vest here so it's easily accessible if I need it. Um, I don't need it all the time when I get out, so that's why I keep it on this side instead of this side. Another thing that's weird about the truck, in my opinion, is that the radio is all the way up here. This is a spot for the CB. Um, I don't have a CB currently because I'm trying to see whether or not my boss will allow me to have one in this truck or not, so we'll see in the future, and I'll talk more about that. Um, so it's kind of interesting and I'm glad that there's actually, there is controls for this on the steering wheel. So you can kind of work with this from the steering wheel. It's got 
Well, this is the cruise control, but these buttons also work on the radio and so do these. So it, it's easy when I'm driving that I don't have to reach up all the way to this radio when I want to change something because I'm a short person. So if I sit in this seat and I'm sitting down at the ground, my, my feet aren't even touching the ground right now. But to reach all the way up here, it's, it's kind of like a far reach for me. So that's just something that's nice about it. This is a radar for the truck. The cool thing about these is, um, well, this is just a different mode. Um, this tells me how far the vehicle is in front of me. And it also is a safety mechanism. So that way it kind of, if you set the cruise control, it's got an adaptive cruise control. So it will match the speed of the person in front of you to keep the distance that you need for us to have a safe distance to stop. It also helps to stop the vehicle in an emergency. So if it detects something in front of you, like a barrier that you're going like full speed ahead into, the radar will shut off the cruise control and try to brake the truck. Um, Sometimes it thinks nothing is a barrier, so it tries to stop the truck, but if you are actively, um, if your foot is actively on the pedals and you are using them and not just using cruise control, then it will not break the truck. But if you are in cruise control, it will try to break the truck to try to slow down and prevent you from hitting whatever it thinks is in front of you, which is, it's honestly, it's nice, but it's actually required on all FedEx trucks to have this. A lot of trucks don't have a trailer brake, which I don't know why. Um, this is used to check your trailer brake. So if you were to, um, I don't know if you could hear that. That was air um, escaping. Um, so what this does is it releases all the air from the system in the trailer to make sure that when all the air is out of the trailer and you try to pull forward against the trailer, the brakes hold the trailer from you pulling it, if that makes sense. Um, it's just a way we check our brakes. And then just a bunch of buttons. These are all lights. So this is the lights on the back of the truck that help me when I'm hooking up. Um, I turn these on when I'm trying to hook up my airlines. The weird thing about the Western Star that I've never had on a truck before, but I sorry about if you hear dakota barking she's just not liking all the people walking around in the um in the parking lot <laughs> these are my headlights so i just turn them on and it turns on the headlights um I don't really know what this button does. I haven't figured out. If somebody knows what this button does, please let me know. Um, these are my marker lights. So all the lights for, for people who aren't truckers, these are all the yellow and red lights on our truck. So the red lights in the back that are on the sides of the trailer and all the yellow lights that are up and down the sides and over the top. Um, they're called ID lights or clearance lights. Then I have something over here called driving lights. Um, everybody knows what these are. These are your four ways. These are basically the lights. You know how on, I guess, on all the new cars, they have these lights that are always on all the time. They're like little, they're little light strips and they're not necessarily, they're just decorative. That's what that is, is that little light strip around the light, around the headlights that makes it look cool. That's what that is. And then, um, of course, I have fog lights. This is a mirror defog. I just basically call it a mirror warmer <laughs> because all it does is warm up the mirror so that way we can see if there is ice or snow on the mirror and it just kind of melts off. It also makes it so it's clear. So we can see it in fog if the mirror is really cold, there will be dew on the mirror and it'll make it hard to see. So this just kind of helps heat it up and get it off. This is a newer truck, so I do have a DEF system on this truck. Um, the system basically, for people who aren't truck drivers, the system basically cleans our exhaust so when it comes out, it's less harmful to the environment. This is a hill start assist. So basically what this does is it it prevents the truck from rolling backwards. If I stop at a stop sign and I'm getting off an on-ramp and it's going up, and I stop at that stop sign, 
from the time it takes me to take my foot off the brake and push it on the accelerator, I could roll backwards and that basically, it's, it's always engaged, it prevents me from rolling back. This is just a little button that allows me to turn that safety off. This is just a traction control turn off. The truck has a traction control and it stops the wheels from spinning when they spin. So this just allows you to spin the tires if you are trying to get out of a hole. This is just sometimes your engine will try to shut off. This is to prevent the engine from turning off. So this last button here with the red light on is the lane alert button. Basically, I wish I could get a video of this. I probably will eventually. If you, if your truck, your truck has a sensor that's watching the lines on the road. And if you get too close to a line or you don't turn your blinker on when you're crossing lanes, essentially it thinks, you know, you're not supposed to be crossing the lane. So therefore it's going to notify you and tell you, Hey, silly, wake up you're not in your lane. So this is what this button's for. It's, it's a safety. So if somebody was to fall asleep, what they're hoping is that that noise will wake the driver up so that way he doesn't crash. You can turn this off and the light will go off and it'll tell you that the system is off. The thing about it is, is you can obviously turn it back on. The system will only be off for I don't know, a set amount of time and then it will automatically turn itself back off. For this one, I think it's anywhere from five to 10 minutes, but I haven't timed it yet, so I don't really know. But I turn it off sometimes. In construction zones, you, that's why they give you the option to turn it off. So that way you don't have to listen to it while it's yelling at you as you're going through a construction zone and none of the lines make any sense. I only have one button for the lights in the back, which is, for, for a Cascadia, you actually have four lights, but you only have one for this. So this is on and off for that one. These are all things that you shouldn't touch while you're driving. The first button lowers my suspension. So basically it, it dumps all the air out of my airbags on my tail end, on my drive tires. So that way, when I roll down the landing gear for a trailer, usually have it like a little bit above the ground. And when you drop your air, you're supposed to be kind of setting those legs on the ground before you pull out from under it, just so, you, so you're not messing with the equipment, if that makes sense. It's just, it's nicer for the equipment. You don't have to do it, but that's what that's there for. Or if a trailer is too low, um, instead of cranking it up, if it's really heavy, you can drop your airbags to get under it and then lift it up and hook onto it. Anyways, um, this one we never touch here. Uh, the, it's the fifth wheel slide, it's the second button. And um, our fifth wheels for FedEx have to be all the way to the rear. And the last one is just a differential lock because we have two sets of drive tires. So this is my air horn. Um, when trucks blow their air horn at you, this is what they're pulling on. The other thing is so this camera helps protect me when, so say a driver gets in front of me and slams on the brakes um, and I had no time to kind of get away from him and I slam into him. This is going to help me because it's going to show that one, I was paying attention and doing my job, but two, it's also outward looking and it's watching what's happening in front of me. So this thing can save me from a lawsuit basically and prove that I was doing my job correctly. So this last one over here is a pre-pass. It's um, for the way stations. When you go through a way station, basically it will let the way station know all of the credentials of the truck and it will determine whether or not it wants to go ahead and send you on down the interstate or if it wants you to pull in. And this right here is my e-log system. Um, I actually really like the way this e-log system works. It's very, I don't know. I, I like the the system it runs on. It, it's very easy to use, unlike the Omnitrax. I don't know what this one's called, but I like this one. A couple of things that I thought I might share with you guys, even though they're kind of personal. This is a truck tour of my truck, so I'm going to show you. This is a frog of mine. His name is Lucky. He's kind of dirty. Um, he sat on lots of dashes. Um, I think I got him back in like 
2008 or 2009. I picked him up at a garage sale with my grandmother, um, who has now since passed away, and we named him Lucky. And so, long story short, maybe I'll tell you guys the story another time. Lucky is supposed to protect you from water. There's a long story behind why he protects me from water, but for now, that's what he does, and so I just put him in the dash of the truck, and so, just a little bit of kind of, I don't, I don't know if I necessarily believe that he protects me from water, but you know, it's cool to, to kind of have a little something that I've had for so long and I've had in every vehicle I've ever driven. Hopefully I'll never crash when it's snowing or when it's raining or anything like that. So that's the story about Lucky. So if you ever see my truck and you see Lucky in the window, it's, it's definitely me. On this side of my truck, I keep all of my food items. If you look at my organization video, you will see more in depth what all this stuff is, but this is just my pantry. Um, I have some things that I grab quite often here, so fruit that I can easily pick up while I'm driving. What? <laughs> up and then drive with it and eat it while I'm driving not come back here while I'm driving and pick it up <laughs> that was kind of weird um, so sorry new rug and it's not kind of laying down all the way um, in here I have all of my clothing so my socks and this will be my underwear basket um, but right now I just have my beanie in it and then under here I have my snow jacket and my vacuum also I have this super awesome fuzzy rug on the floor and it is so nice and I'm really excited about it. I have in front a high traffic utility mat. It's got a rubber bottom so it sticks to the floor and doesn't slide around. I also like that I could just take it out and hose it off. I'm going to keep Dakota's bowls right here which are easily just collapsible and you can fold them away if I need to take them with me anywhere which is really nice. And um, she's just used to having them right here, so this is where I keep them. She also has a towel on her seat to help protect the seat. Um, <laughs> hey girl. This is my bed. I have a ton of blankets on my bed because it gets really cold and I don't like to run the truck at night. I'm trying to save fuel for my boss um, because I care. And I know it costs a lot of money, so I just bundle up with blankets and I don't know, it's pretty nice. And so I'm not sure yet if I'm going to keep Dakota's bed here or not, but I like it because it's got those big walls on it. So while the truck is, you know, rocking back and forth, oh, she thinks I'm trying to pet her. <laughs> so while the truck is rocking back and forth, it kind of holds her in one spot. Plus she always sleeps in it when I was working in the office and she also likes it in the back of the car. So I figure we'll try it out and see if she likes it here and if she uses it or not. And that will determine whether or not I keep it on the truck. But I also just have a lot of pillows on this side so I have two king size pillows plus a body pillow and then two super soft pillows I just got these at Target and I am literally obsessed with them they are so soft I can't even I can't even describe to you guys how soft these are and I love them so much in this cubby is all of my paperwork for my truck. I have some IFTA stickers that I need to put on the truck and then we have a mileage log that we have to fill out for FedEx and also all of the registration and things are in here. Um, my first drawer, you can know more about this in my truck organization video and I go ahead and I show you everything and where I put everything but I just keep Dakota's stuff in here as well as some other things that I reach for quite often. Um, so that's just that. And then in this drawer down here, I keep all of my toiletries and towels and things. Do you want to come down? She is very unhappy up here for some reason. So if you're in a Cascadia and you have one of the Freightliner fridges, you know that it's really important to kind of bungee or lock your fridge door because the suction or magnets or whatever it is that holds that refrigerator door just falls open all the time and then you have all of the things out of your refrigerator because theirs is on the ground everything from the refrigerator just rolls up to the front while you're driving and you're just like oh my gosh and you have to pull over and put it all back and there's no real good way to secure it so that i like that little latch thing it's important to me there's also a um a little cubby up here which the net here let me turn this off 
the net up here just it kind of pulls down and then and then just kind of springs back up which is kind of cool but I'm too short so I'm probably never gonna put anything up there unless I really just need to keep something on the truck for some reason that I don't use regularly I think that this is possibly the bunk heater but I'm not sure because when you I I thought you can't turn bunk heaters on when the trucks on oh the truck isn't on guys the truck isn't on so that's possibly the bunk heater and I think I'm almost positive that's what that is there's also a clock back here with an alarm you can set which is super cool because lately my phone alarm hasn't been working and it's I've woken up every time on time by a miracle but it'd be cool to learn how to use this thing and then of course a cigarette lighter thing and then um, this is the AC back here which you can turn on and off which I thought was pretty cool so you can turn this turn the power on to this and it will turn the AC on um, and you can also switch it from AC to heat so I'm gonna turn that off now um, this is also a light for the sleepers you know if you're in a Freightliner Cascadia that there's usually even the Volvos I believe have lights or buttons for lights above and below but there is only one button back here that works all of the lights and you just turn it off and you turn it back on from right here and I think this is the same light or same switch that's up there and then I thought this was really interesting too you can turn the fridge on and off so you can turn the fridge off but I'm gonna keep it on because I'm gonna put food in it tonight these windows this is the windows I was trying to tell you guys about when I move Hold on, I'll move this. Can you see how big that window is? That's amazing. So I'm gonna keep this here. Um, and then these are just little reading lights that you can move around. But I'm just keeping them on for light in here because it's dark outside right now. And now I'm going to show you the very last thing that I'm going to show you in this truck, which is the top bunk. So there's like a seatbelt up here that I'm just going to unclip if I can. All right. And then I believe you just put this in here and you just pull it down and the top bunk comes down and it's like a um, it's just a regular twin size bed that has Dakota hair on it and just climb up on here and guys when the cameraman's on the truck this is where he sleeps Alrighty guys, so that's it for the truck tour. I'm gonna go ahead and end the video now. It's dark outside and I need to go to sleep because I have a load in the morning. But if you've liked this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, let me know by giving me a thumbs down because I mean, it's good to know if people like the videos or they don't. Or if you have some constructive criticism, please leave it in the comments below. Also, if there's anything I missed and you have this truck, please let me know. I'm still super new to this truck. I've only been driving it a week and I haven't really had a lot of time to kind of explore what, the, what all this truck holds. That's it for tonight and I will see you guys in another one. Bye now. You ready? Okay, you ready? You ready? Ready, 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 ready?